confess it and forsake it. But it's funny to look back at now, but you know what? It's really quite embarrassing when you talk about it to think that we didn't persevere through something like that. You know, Jesus said, He who is faithful in little will be faithful in what? In much. If I can't even make a trip where I'm suffering a little bit of lack of sleep and hunger, what does that say about the times that we know we're going to have to go through? I would say that there's a lot more chipping away at me that needs to be done. You know? And hopefully, through God's grace, that will be accomplished. But when these things happen in our lives, they are an indicator, are they not, of where we are in our walk with God. And sometimes we can think, you know, we're doing pretty good. But a trial, a temptation, will set us straight pretty quick. And then we learn that we need to depend on Christ with everything we have. And deny ourselves. I mean, it should, we should have looked at it as an opportunity to fast. You know? Oh, we can't find a place to eat. Praise the Lord. We'll use this time to fast. Oh, we can't play, you know, find a place to sleep. Praise the Lord. Maybe, uh, maybe we can spend this time in prayer. Singing hymns or something like that. But instead we resorted to arguing, bickering, and complaining. Which is, you know, obviously appealing to the flesh but produces nothing but wickedness, really. Alright, so I share that story to my shame, but hopefully something that you'll remember. Any other thoughts before we move over to Sunday? Alright, Sunday. Patience is an attribute of God. Exodus 34, verse 6. Would someone like to read that there on the page? Exodus 34 and verse 6. Go ahead. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long suffering and abounding in goodness and truth. What is it that sticks out to you in that descript, that description there of God's character? Anything that cries out to your heart as you read that? Because this is really revealing. If you look at it in the context, Moses wants to see God's face, doesn't he? And Moses says, you know, or God says to Moses, you can't see my face and live, but I will pass before you. And I will reveal my character to you. And so God is really describing in the limited form that words contain his character here. What is it that jumps out to you when you read that, that sentence? They're all positive attributes of God. Uh... You know, we think of a lot of things. You know, we think about these things being attributes of God and, and God is loving, but we also realize God is a God of judgment and these things. But in reality, all those God of judgment, all that stuff falls under these attributes. I mean, this is the character of God. And we can just look at our lives and understand how long suffering God is. I mean, it's a good thing God doesn't have my character or this earth will be in trouble because my long suffering is not very long. Uh, when you think about all the times that I have sinned, probably millions of times I have sinned in my life, who knows, you know, and God has, still has this long-suffering patience and He's going he's gonna to stay with me until I'm perfected in Christ. Mm. And you know, that just reveals such a tremendous attribute of God. And if I could be just a small glimpse of that, a small piece of that down here on earth with my family and friends and people, you know, what, what, a, what a glory to God that would be. Amen. 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 Any other thoughts on... on uh, I'll tell you what, let's turn in, in our Bibles to Exodus 34. Because they didn't include the whole thing. And I think it's, it's worthy to look at. Because Mike brought out a good point there that along with God's mercy and His long-suffering, His goodness and truth, there's another attribute that we're going to look at this week as well. So in Exodus chapter 34... I'm going to read verses 6 and 7 together there. It says, The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. And what's the next thing say? By no means clearing what? The guilty. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. And that's important to realize as we're studying about patience that even though God, this, this encompasses what God is. He is patient, right? Or He would have snuffed every one of us out a long time ago, right? He is patient. But there is a reality 
to the character of God that we have to realize that even that patience has its end, doesn't it? That in God's foreknowledge, He knows that if He would give you a million years, you would never fully surrender to Him. And in that, it's like that patience runs out. And He says, you know, if there's nothing more I can give you. There's nothing more I can do for you to, to break or change your heart. And at that point, it's like the patience or the cup of iniquity, the Bible describes it as, is full. And so we have to keep that in mind too. He does not clear the guilty without a turn of heart, right? There are conditions for forgiveness, repentance, you know, turning from that sin and coming to Him just as you are in that condition and saying, Lord, I don't want to be like this anymore. Forgive me. Cleanse me from this sin. If we don't go through that process, will God forgive us? Will He just wipe our record clean? No. No, because that would be robotic. That would be like changing you, know, you against your will. And if He drug people like that into heaven, they wouldn't be happy there anyway. And so this process that we're going through, even though it's painful and there are trials and there are tribulations and there's all these uncomfortable situations, the reality is we need that. And it's through that fiery um, tribulation that we're going through that we will be cleansed and purged to God's glory, to His glory. But yeah, it's wonderful attributes there as we look at who God is in His character. This is not just an Old Testament revealing. If you go to Revelation chapter 1 and verse 9, you know, if I, I have to laugh because sometimes people say, you can't understand Revelation. It's a sealed book. What does the word revelation mean? To reveal. It's a revealing, right? Of who God is. And even though it's done through symbols and imagery, the reality is as we we search and we pray and we study, God will reveal who He is in the book of Revelation. Well, here's a very simple one. Revelation 1.9 says, I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and what? Patience of who? Jesus Christ was on the island that is called Patmos for the Word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Here, this patience is intimately linked to Jesus Himself. The patience of Christ. And we see that in the life that He lived here in our behalf, right? How He endured. How He suffered. How He had patience in the most horrific situations. Even crying out from the cross, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. I would love to be able to cry that when someone cuts me off. But here's a man who's crying that while they're spitting on him and mocking him. Can you imagine being infinite in power and having your creation, you know, kill you? Like humbling yourself to that degree? I can't imagine it. But this is what the character of God is like in order to save us, He endured all things. Well, down at the bottom of Sunday there, uh, it says in the bold, Why is God patient with sinners? Let's look that up. 2 Peter, 2 Peter 3, 8 and 9. If I can get a volunteer to read that. 2 Peter 3, 8 and 9. Okay, Mike. Second Peter three nine. Yes. For the love do not be ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Mm. All right, here it says the Lord is long suffering. And you don't have to be a Bible scholar to know what that means. That means suffering long. That means God is suffering as He is patiently waiting for us to come to fruition, right? For our characters to be changed like His. He, you know, we say that God is omnipotent, He's omniscient. I also think He's omni feeling. In other words, He feels what you feel. He, he, he is intimately linked with the pain that we have as well. Not only is He all-knowing and everywhere, but I also believe that when we cry, when we hurt, that He feels that as well. And so here He is 
You know, I used to, you, you kind of separate the text. You know, verse